Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to take you through five budget-friendly wedding ideas that I have for you guys. Some of which we have used and some of which we didn't need to, but I just want to take you through five wedding ideas that can kind of help you close in that budget. I'm actually refilming this, hence the pajama shirt that says bride, so it kind of makes sense for right now, but we're struggling with this apartment, man. We love it, but but for creating online content, there's just so much background noise. So I filmed this whole video in my bedroom and I have to refilm it. And hopefully you guys can hear it a little better than you could the other one, though you're never gonna hear it. So you don't even know how bad the audio was, but it was bad. The first tip that I have is to pick a different day than Saturday. So Saturday is just the most important day to have a wedding on, to have any kind of event on really, and they're able to hike their prices up because of that. So one of the things when we were looking into a traditional venue was we were looking at either a Friday or a Sunday date for our wedding in order to cut the cost a little bit. So for example, with the uh, venue that we originally chose and we're going to go with before like everything blew up, um, it was literally half as much to have it on Sunday than it was to have it on Saturday. and that was just worth it to us we don't have any family members or friends that are super religious where they would miss out on our wedding just because it was on a sunday so we had every intention of doing it at that time i've even heard that some vendors will charge you a little bit less just because it's not as busy of a day they tend to not fill up fridays and set or in sundays so uh, they can make a little bit of more a little bit more money that way but they'll usually give you a little bit of a deal we didn't get so much of a deal from any of the vendors, but we definitely did from the venue. So number two, to stay on the topic of venues, is to not pick a typical venue. So venues will be one of the most expensive parts of the whole wedding budget, if not the most expensive besides food. So looking into not so typical places to have your wedding. So. In Chicago, it is either the second or third most expensive city in the United States to get married. So a lot of places are really expensive, but I know in other places you can do things like parks or um, small areas outside, or maybe you can do it in like a public area or something like that. We've been able to save a little bit of money that way just by doing something a little bit out of the box. So doing things like parks, look into Airbnb or v, uh, Verbo, VRBO, and um, sometimes you can rent like big houses and things like that and do things in the backyard. Just look into different types of venues that might not be your typical hall or uh, hotel banquet area. Sometimes you can save a little bit of money that way. Number three is to tap into friendships. So this is something that we did a little bit, kind of tapping into people that had resources or could help us or help us find a less expensive option. So for example, we have a friend of ours being the officiant, we have a friend of ours being a DJ, we have a friend of ours helping with wedding coordination, a friend of ours kind of helping with any of the writing and calligraphy that we're doing. I even had a friend offer to bring her GoPro with to the wedding since we won't have a videographer. So Ben is going to be joining us from afar with his headphones on for the last two because he couldn't sit still until I was <laughs> filming the video. Number four in my little list here is chuck stuff into the fuck it bucket. So if any of you have ever listened to the podcast Bride Chilla instead of Bridezilla, it's basically all about how to be chill during your wedding planning. And they have a Facebook group as well, which is actually how I participate. I don't really listen to the podcast. So with that, they talk about something called chucking things into the fuck it bucket, meaning things that don't mean anything to you. Even if they mean something to other people, even if it's traditional, just chucking those things out of your wedding budget. So for example, for me, one of those things is invites. I don't care about invites. I know that people just throw them away when they're done with them, and I didn't wanna spend hundreds of dollars on invites that people are just gonna throw away. Uh, I also don't really have like a crazy theme at my wedding, so it wasn't like I needed it all to be kind of interactive in that way. Other things that we chucked into the fuck it bucket, as they say, is the videographer. 
Uh, honestly, I would love to have a videographer, but we just don't need one. And I may regret that, but at the same time, that's just kind of what we have to do. Also things like a wedding planner. We do have a friend of ours helping with day of coordination, but I've planned events before. So I was able to kind of step, step into that area of wedding planning, especially with it being at a family member's home. It just wasn't necessary to have a full wedding planner. So those are things that we kind of threw out of the way. I'm also not getting my makeup done. My friend will be doing it for me. So just things like that, that for me, it just wasn't that worth it. Um, oh, another big thing actually was I'm not getting a wedding band. First of all, I don't think it's necessary. Second of all, it doesn't look good with my ring. So instead of getting that, we just kind of moved past that. But things that were really important to us and to me was my dress and a photographer. So we definitely spent the most money on those two things. We also are very particular about food, not so much that we need to spend a lot of money, but that we need it to be something that both Ben and I can eat. We both don't eat gluten or dairy very often, so those were uh, really important things. And then number five is make your own floral arrangements. So flowers can be super, super expensive, and I love flowers. That's the only thing that I really care to decorate with, but they can be so expensive to have done by a florist. Um, if you have the money in your budget, I say go for it, but if you don't and you're trying to find ways to cut costs, you definitely can make your own uh, florals. There's so many different ways that they show you how to do on Pinterest or online, and you can order like bulk flowers from Costco or things like that where you can kind of make your own floral arrangement. So for us, for example, we are going to be getting white hydrangeas and greenery, hopefully. Hydrangeas are great because they're large flowers, but they're usually pretty inexpensive. So we'll be able to like not have to buy as many in order to fill like centerpieces, things like that. And then um, greenery, just because it's inexpensive, but it looks really pretty, especially against like a white tablecloth. So just things like that. You can find a way to make your own, to make your own boutonnieres, or maybe it's just like not something you're interested in. For us, we're going to be leaving for a small mini moon right after our wedding, and we won't have anything to do with any of the flowers. So it just seems silly for us with such a tight bud budget to spend upwards of thousands of dollars on flowers that we won't even get to see after that. Those are the five top ways that I think that you can save a little bit of money toward your wedding. If you have a lot of money that you can spend or you've saved for a really long time to have like the most beautiful day of your life, go for it. I'm so happy for you. But unfortunately for us, it just wasn't in the cards. So we had to find ways to pay a little bit less and to find creative ways that we could still have a beautiful wedding while it not being like a $30,000 experience. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video and you enjoyed the tips about wedding budgeting and uh, wedding planning. So definitely let us know in the comments below if it's something that you enjoy. If you wanna hear any more wedding tips, definitely let us know. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. We talk about all things wellness, financial, health, um, relationship, all that kind of stuff. So make sure that you stay tuned.